that R38 ships us of making this Sinelli dangerous and choosing the right one is important. So, I bet you have questions. How does Latvian food taste like? About the same as my foot up your ass, Bob! But seriously though, it's mostly bland. There are some good things, obviously, but majority is just like today's bunch of ships. Run of the mill runs that are there to just do the thing and not really be noticed. The workman's beating, I mean, working, yes, working horse, one and all. Overall, I would consider this list of ships to be the so-called baseline, that everything gets compared to in a more greater scheme of things. Let's then begin with the ship that everyone starts in, unless you have a special Kickstarter version of course, the Sidewinder will be the ship you get. Since this is the first for all, it's clearly the truest of true baseline comparison everyone uses. After that there are two types of people, people who like myself get a bit more money to buy the straight up upgrade to Winder, the Adder, or people who choose to go with the Eagle as a cheaper but still very much of an upgrade to the little starter ship. Oh my god, and Spigglesworth? Did, did that degenerate scumbag filthy peasant dare to speak up to me? B bring my plasma cannon? No! But yeah, as much as I like these three ships to be useful on day-to-day -day basis, seriously, I love Eagle so much, they're still just not worth it. They are there to get you acquainted with the game and not much else. Yes, Seagull has the best turning rate in the game of all ships. And with Adder, I constantly do the speedrun first portions, but it's just one moment. And the reason why these ships are not in the one use ship tier is because a lot of us tend to use these ships for multitude of reasons and jobs until we got something better. Moving on then, the glorious and fabulous and exquisite Banana X-Wing Wannabe i.e. Imperial Courier. The easiest of the ships to unlock from either navies, it is actually pretty nice for a lot of things. Combat? Check. Exploration? Check. Trading? Uh, oh, well, um, yeah, maybe not so check. Still, 2 out of 3 is decent if not good, but what keeps this little bundle of joy from advancing is this boy. Yeah, Viper has more speed, weapons and armor. More importantly, it's way cheaper for about the same performance. Then on the cargo stuff, again, uh, there's a way cheaper option. A more godlike ship called Cobra Tree, which fills that role. So for a massive price tag and a rank lock, is the looks and somewhat combined positives really that worth it? Well, kind of. And that's why it's only an okay ship. Speaking of some really neat positives and a massive hole in your pocket, as if you attempted to aggressively impregnate the poor thing, the crate Phantom. Currently, this is the new Asp Explorer, the new exploration king for some. While with not the most jump range, it still boasts the number 3 spot among the rest of the flying saucers. Add some more space than in Asp Explorer and great looks, well, not even the price tag will scare you then. Even for combat, it feels quite overpowered due to massive array of hard points and power distributor compared to the other ships in the price tag. The downfall really is the price, maneuverability and survivability as the shields and armor aren't the best. If I had to describe the ship in a bodybuilder terms, then this would be a leg day or arm day, only kind of a guy with jacked up muscles due to the synthol abuse. And now I'm questioning whether or not it's okay to even call this trend okay. As for the combat heads, I guess I should give some spots to those ships as well, don't you think? Well, you're in luck, cause we have the mighty Dockabo, the gunship here. As the ship is... well, okay. Yeah, it's just okay. Still, when I think of a ship launch fighter wielding ship, the gunship is the first one that crosses my mind. Yes, yes, I know it has literally the worst jump range in the game. But the thing about gunship is, it does everything to an okay level while having some extras too. Like the aforementioned fighter option, lots of guns! Lots of utilities, lots of guns! Oh wait, did I mention guns? Yeah, guns! Also armor too, but I gotta be honest, this thing's dragging hard and close to the bad territory, but it somehow holds on. I don't know, maybe it's just my massive hard on for the guns! And finally the Corvette, the ship that curiously a lot of you voted for in the best poll, making it go to top 5. But why is that? Answer? PvE casual pleb 
peasants. But seriously, just think about it. The ship is the most maneuverable, massive thing out there with shit on a firepower. The ultimate power fantasy for those that shred NPCs. Though, once you take it out for a PvP stroll, you find yourself outrun by everyone. Well, then maybe trading. After all, this thing actually had the second largest cargo bay for a long while. But just like gunship is let down by the jump range. But still, at least it has plenty of cargo space. To be frank, by only a hair, this ship escapes the one you ship tier. Corvette, just simply being one of the big three ships can stuff whatever you want in it, which gives you that customizability, but ultimately, it's just a PvE scrubs power dream. And I love it! So there you have it, the OK tier. Did I miss anything? Or maybe I shouldn't have included that one ship. I know you know which one I'm talking about. Don't take the guns! Well, in any case, do let me know what you'd change. Oh, and of course, do share this around. Why not? So now all that's left is the good tier of ships. As the good times are rolling now. Or maybe take a peek in the one-use, one-pump chump wheel. Promise, it's sadder than the high school dropout's room under a blacklight. And with that perfect mental image, I'ma take my leave.